Let me walk you through a vulnerability I found in one of my latest penetration testing engagements, in which I found a blind command injection. But since this was a black box assessment, which is similar to bug bounty hunting, I decided to put together a lab to simulate the vulnerability. In a lab directory, run docker compose up, and if you have any issues, try to run first docker compose build, then docker compose up. Once the containers are up, navigate to localhost on port 5000. I found this vulnerability on the staff subdomain. This subdomain had a login portal related to the staff and the employees. I first tried to log in with common credentials like admin admin and admin password, etc. And the very first thing I noticed is that after exactly three failed login attempts, a captcha appears and it asks you to multiply two numbers together. And if you supply incorrect captcha three times, your IP address will get blocked. Here you can use a VPN or you can just restart your router because you're most likely using dynamic IP address. But in our case here, we'll just reset the lab each time we get blocked. After playing around this capture for a while, I noticed a flaw in the CAPTCHA implementation. As long as we keep supplying the correct CAPTCHA each time we get one, our IP address will get blocked. Taking advantage of this flaw, I tried to enumerate users, but with no success. Then I used the Wayback URLs tool to get archived URLs related to the subdomain, and I found some URLs that contain a get parameter called verify, and it was being fuzzed for SQL injections. I tested the same parameter for SQL injections, but the only difference was that I tested it as a post parameter, not a get parameter. But as expected, there was a WAF in place. I didn't go further here because this parameter was heavily tested. Another idea came into my mind, which is to fuzz for other post parameters. But we can't do that yet because we have two issues. The first one is that we can't use any fuzzing tools like fuff or wfuzz because we have a capture in place. The second one is that we get blocked after exactly three incorrect capture inputs. However, we can take advantage of the flawed capture implementation and automate it. And we can do this two ways, either by using regular expressions or web scraping. So I put together a Python script to achieve this. This is a fairly simple script to do the job. We start up by importing the URL lib module for URL encoding, the request module for HTTP requests, the RE module for regular expressions, and beautiful suit for web scraping. We start by calling the main function. In the main function, we get a handle to the actions.txt word list from SACLIST. Then we loop through each parameter in the word list. Here we make a get a request to the login endpoint to get the captcha if it exists. Then here we can bypass or carve out the captcha from the response body with either regular expressions or web scraping using beautiful soup. First, let's see how can we carve it out using regular expressions. So in the bypass captcha with regex function, we pass to it the whole response body. First, we carve out the multiplier of the multiplicand. We search for any diff tag that has the multiplier class, then the period and the asterisk to match anything up until the closing tag. Then we surround the number or the multiplier that we want to carve out with parentheses. Then we finish off with the closing diff tag. Then we do the same thing for the multiplicand. After that, we check the length of both the multiplier or the multiplicand. If we have a match, the re to find all function will return an array with a match string. And if not, it will return an empty array which means there's no captcha yet to carve out. So we can return zero. Also, if there's a captcha, we do the multiplication and we return the result. This is for the regex approach. Now for the web scraping approach, we call the bypass captcha with bs4 function, which takes the same parameter as the regex function. This approach is way easier than the regex approach. Here we create a beautiful soup instance and we pass to it the response body and we use the HTML parser. Then we search in a document tree for a dev that has the multiplier class. Then we do the same thing for the multiplicand. If nothing is found, that means there's no captcha yet. So we return zero. If there's a Captcha will carve out the multiplier and the multiplicand from the div tags. Then we do the multiplication and return the result. So both methods work just fine. After that, we check the return result. If it's a zero, then we call the fuzz function and pass to it only the parameter that we want to fuzz for, because the captcha parameter is set to zero by default. Else, we pass the parameter along with the captcha result to the fuzz function. In the fuzz function, we define the request headers and the post parameters, the capture result and the parameter we want to fuzz for. Then we define the URL for the endpoint that we want to fuzz. Then we make the request and pass to it the headers and the post data. And we set allow redirects to false to prevent Python from being redirected to the login page after making the request. 
Then we check the response status code. If it's at 200, that means we have a hit. So here we print the parameter that we found along with the response status code. After running the script, I got back another parameter, which is run. So straight after that, I started playing with it in prep suite. But similar to the verify parameter, there was a WAF in place. But unlike the verify parameter, I kept on testing for other attacks. One of the attacks I tested for was a CRLF injection, which stands for carriage return line feed. Let's assume that we want to bypass this WAF. Here we have two scenarios. The first one is to somehow come up with a payload that the WAF doesn't recognize or flag as malicious. And the second scenario is to somehow find a way to smuggle a command or a payload for the server to execute. And this is where the CRLF injection comes in. When we URL decode this payload, for example, it will split into two commands. Basically what happened here is that when this percent sign %0D percent sign %0A gets URL decoded, the percent sign %0D will be decoded to a carriage return, which you can say will move the cursor to the very beginning of the line. And the percent sign %0A will be decoded to a line feed which will just insert the second portion of the payload on a new line. Now the WAF will only check the first line of the payload, giving us the ability to smuggle the second portion of the payload. When running this payload in Burp, we still get blocked, but maybe the payload got executed but the WAF blocked the output. We can determine if that's the case or not by performing a blind command injection. We can just inject a sleep command for 5 seconds, and if we get a delay, that means we are dealing with a blind command injection. And when doing so, we can confirm that's the case. But do we stop here and report? No. We still can escalate this. What we're going to do now is to force the server to make a HTTP request to a server we control and have it exfiltrate the output of whatever command we inject. And we can use a command like curl to exfiltrate the output. So for that I put together another python script which is identical to the previous script. The only difference is the inject cmd function. So in the main function it prompts for a command to execute or smuggle. Then we make a get request to the login endpoint to get the captcha. And then we solve it and pass it to the inject cmd function along with the command. In the inject cmd function we define the request headers and the post data parameters. Here we supply the captcha and then we url encode the first part of the payload. Then we concatenate to it the CRLF injection. Then we url encode the command that we want the server to execute. Then we make the request. Before we run the script, if you don't have a server running to receive the exfiltrated data, you can create one temporarily from a service like request.bin to receive HTTP requests on. First, let's run a sleep command to make sure the script is running just fine. And yes, everything looks good. In this curl command, the vulnerable server will make a HTTP POST request to our bin here. And first, we'll have it execute the ID command as a proof of concept and pipe it to base64 to base64 encode the bad characters in the output of the ID command. And we set it as the value of the data POST parameter. Now the moment of truth. When we hit enter, we immediately receive the request. Decoding the exfiltrated base64 data, we get the output of the id command. What a hack. Before I end the video here, if you are enjoying these deep dives into real world penetration test engagements on bug bounty findings, I want to see more hands on labs that simulate these scenarios, please 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 consider becoming a Patreon to support me to create more content like this. All the support I'll get from you guys will be invested in creating more content like this. And also don't forget to do a YouTube algorithm thing. You know, subscribe, like, share, you know the list. And yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.